Uh, again, I'm Joe Kuyper. I'm the uh, museum's executive director. And welcome to the 27th annual Thomas Jefferson Awards. Uh, we're going to have a little information uh, on the uh, awards themselves in just a moment here. But uh, first of all, I have a, a few folks and organizations to acknowledge. Uh, sponsoring tonight's uh, event, we have the Virginia Tech College of Natural Resources, uh, CRT Tanaka in Richmond, Virginia, Norfolk Southern, Bruce Wingo, and uh, the Virginia Museum of Natural History Foundation. So thank you to everybody who has sponsored this, and again, thank you all of you who made the time to come out here tonight. Now, uh, a little bit of trivia to put in your back pocket before we get things started. Uh, this year, this year, 2013, is the 100th anniversary of the death of Alfred Russell Wallace. Who here knows who Alfred Russell Wallace was? Oh my goodness, right? It's a very small amount. Well, here's the thing. Who knows who, who, knows who Char Charles Darwin <laughs> right? Okay, Okay. so going back to the 1840s and 1850s, this poor guy, Russell, uh, Alfred Russell Wallace, he was uh, 25 years old. He was tooling around Brazil, Southeast Asia, the Austral Asian region, and whatnot. And he was doing what Victorian naturalists did. He collected. He uh, collected thousands of specimens, many alive, many preservative, and whatnot. When he did all that collecting for four years, to study, to better understand the natural world. He put it all on a ship, sailed back to England, but didn't make it. The ship burned, went down, he floated on a life, uh, lifeboat for 10 days, four years of work down the tubes. He got more money, he went back out, he did it all over again, collected thousands of specimens, and in the process, he came up with a theory, an idea about the order of nature. And in 1858, a year before the publication of The Origin of Species, he writes Charles Darwin, and says, sir, you don't know me, but I admire your work. And I have this idea about evolution by natural selection. <coughs> so what he said. And in the end, that's what got Darwin off of his, you know, off of his chair and actually sit down and finally write the origin of species. And it was widely accepted that this was a joint effort between Wallace and Darwin. But who gets all the credit? Charlie Darwin, right? Poor Wallace lives in somewhat of a world of obscurity. So this is something that we've seen in a variety of places in science where uh, acknowledgement of excellent work is not done. Thomas Jefferson Awards is our small part of doing that, and the people who will be awarded tonight certainly deserve the recognition that they do to support Virginia natural history and natural history education. At this point, I'd like to introduce the Vice President of the Virginia Museum of Natural History Foundation, Mr. Clay Bradley, who's going to tell us a little bit about the awards and a little bit about their history. So Clay. Thank you, Joe. I don't have any fun trivia like that. Uh, but I have to say that I'm, I'm usually, it's usually not a problem for me to speak in front of a, a large group of people like this, but when I, as a Virginia grad, as I walk up here and see this stadium lurking over here where our football team has been their demise so many times in the past, it's like a cold sweat or something. Excellence 
in the world of science and who have brought, uh, who, who have, uh, excuse me, who have brought recognition and prestige to the Commonwealth. This year's awards honor both individuals and corporations that have made outstanding contributions to natural science and natural history through educational practices, conservation efforts, corporate leadership, and lifelong dedication. While the not tonight belongs to the winners and recognizing their brilliant contributions to natural science, the awards also serve a symbolic cause. They sim symbolize both the gratitude the Commonwealth has for those that cherish uh, our natural heritage, as well as the importance and responsibility uh, that they have demonstrated, and we all have in preserving it and promoting it. The winners tonight have demonstrated through continuous effort and dedication that just one individual or just one corporation can have a profoundly positive impact promoting our natural sciences, and we sincerely thank them for their contributions. Thank you.
I recently had the opportunity to hear and see a presentation by Gary Fleming, who is a vegetation ecologist at DCR. And his presentation was on the, the ecological regions and natural communities of Virginia. And it was sort of like a travel log or a panorama of Virginia from the coast to the mountains. It was honestly one of the most fascinating presentations I have ever seen. And you really, I figured out you don't really know Virginia unless you know its geologic forms, its flora, and its fauna. And if you get an opportunity to see this thing somewhere, I know they're doing it. He's speaking at Environment Virginia. But it really is a remarkable uh, presentation on, on Virginia from sort of our perspective. And in fact, I was thinking every member of the General Assembly should really see this thing to understand what we get to, get to work on. So the agencies of, the, of, of my secretary, of the Secretary of Natural Resources, we work to manage and protect and interpret the resources. Um, and without, the, without our work, without the work of the agencies, uh, anglers and hunters, campers, hikers, historians, and citizen scientists would not have the quality experience that they all do. And it's this intersection of people, land, and water that is really our work and uh, what brings life to what we do. And in, indeed, the natural resources related recreation activities <coughs> in the state, there's also a big economic component. They generate some $13 billion per year and create some 138,000 jobs in Virginia. So it's not just about the science and the beauty, it's about the, the economics. So the perceived American degeneracy was disproved by Jefferson. And Virginia's environmental richness is available to all of our citizens. The 2,000 hardworking state employees at the six agencies of the Natural Resources Secretary work diligently in support of environmental protection and conservation, and of course, the governor's, uh, Governor McDonald's environmental agenda. And just to say briefly a word about that, uh, obviously the Chesapeake Bay, improving the health of the Chesapeake Bay has been a major uh, uh, priority for the governor. And we really have seen remarkable results uh, from, from the efforts of the agencies and the General Assembly. Uh, we continue to work on our watershed implementation plan, which is what we do to, we, we agree with uh, EPA on that, that we'll do. In 2011, our major wastewater facilities uh, exceeded pollution reduction goals by more than 2,000%. We exceeded the goal by more than 2,000% for nitrogen and more than 450% for phosphorus. So really remarkable results. In fact, so remarkable that EPA's Region 3, we're in Region 3 uh, of EPA, it awarded Virginia its biggest loser award uh, for ranking first in the region and second in the nation for reducing nitrogen pollution. So it's really a great honor uh, that that's, uh, uh, credit goes to a lot of people, but especially David Paler and David Johnson, who are both uh, the agency directors for that. Uh, so we also see a great rebound of life in the Bay. Uh, and in, uh, back in 2011, we harvested more oysters than in the last 20 years nearly a 250% increase. The Chesapeake Bay blue crab population is now at a near 20 year high. Uh, so really remarkable things are happening. We're seeing a major rebound in the populations of osprey and eagles and striped bass and flounder. So it, the bay is really responding to a lot of these efforts that, that you all help with. This year the General Assembly uh, approved the governor's proposal to invest more than $200 million in additional wastewater treatment facilities across the Commonwealth and to initiate a new program on stormwater improvements, which was the David Johnson's idea at, uh, at DCR. So we're going to be able to continue these kind of results. <coughs> it's all good news for Virginia's rivers, and streams, and the Bay. Uh, meanwhile, even in this tough economy, uh, we've been able to conserve over 150,000 additional acres of open space, and we're making enormous gains in the governor's all of the above energy strategy. In fact, we expect later this year that uh, Virginia will hold 
its first offshore wind lease sale um, that we've ever had, and one of the first ones on the East Coast. It'll be a huge thing. And just today, uh, the Interior Department announced that they, they will be awarding um, our Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy with uh, the first ever East Coast uh, research lease. So these are just things that are moving forward on, on uh, the wind energy side. And, and really a lot is happening. I could go on because it's frankly not hard to brag about the accomplishments of the Department of Historic Resources. Kathleen Kilpatrick is here. Kathleen Murray will wave her hand in the back. Um, our uh, Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, or Conservation and Recreation, or Environmental Quality, or the Marine Resources Commission, uh, and especially, of course, the Virginia Museum of Natural History. I could go on, but I should not. So uh, I want to go on to, the, to the, the awards. The Thomas Jefferson Award Ceremony again celebrates its 26th year, and the, fo uh, the four awards will be presented to those who have made a, a commitment to studying, preserving, and educating others about Virginia's natural resources. And while we all can be inspired by the work of Thomas Jefferson and his friend the sloth, um, let's also be inspired by today's award winners. So thank you very much.